So we have just had our hands on with the Galaxy S10 in London. I even still have my Samsung event bracelet on. That's how fresh this is. Now, if you want to know all about the phone, its screen size, its resolution, how powerful it is, all of that stuff, check out CNET.com. But here I want to talk about the phone's five cameras. That's right, five of them. So we'll start on the back. The S9 Plus last year had two cameras on the back, but with the S10 Plus, that's joined by a third in the form of a 16 megapixel super wide angle lens. So that means that you get the normal view, you get the zoomed in telephoto view that we had on the last phone, but now there's a very, very wide angle which captures a huge amount in a single scene. That's something we've seen already in phones from LG and Huawei, and I actually really, really like it. It's dead easy on the Samsung phone to switch between the different views using the little button on screen. And it's a great tool if you want to capture a huge landscape or a cityscape. The standard 12 megapixel camera keeps that dual aperture function that we saw again on last year's phone. Now this has a wider aperture mode, which hopefully lets in more light, giving you better shots when the sun goes down. But if you need even more help in low light, then Samsung's AI powered shot suggestions may be of use. So it analyzes the scene in front of you to give you the best settings possible, whether that's a picture of a person, of a pet, some food, or, or a nighttime scene. Again, this is something we have seen on various other phones, but the S10 Plus takes it a little bit further by actually guiding you on how to take better photos in those different scenes. In one of the examples I saw at our demo day, when taking a photo of a person, the phone recognized that there's a person in the scene and brought up these yellow guidelines to help me frame the shot in what the phone thinks is the best way to take that picture. You can probably expect guidelines to pop up if you're taking a horizontal shot to make sure that your horizon is nice and straight. And I'm personally hoping that there's one that will remind me to take a photo before I take a big bite of that lovely cupcake. But when the light drops even more, then the AI will use a mode called Bright Night. Now this uses various bits of software trickery to help get a really bright, crisp shot at night without any of that nasty image noise or blur from your shaky hand. And speaking of blur, the phone not only shoots video in 4K and uses HDR10 for punchier colors, but it also uses optical image stabilization to make sure that your footage is really nice and smooth. But what about the front facing cameras for those selfie obsessives among you, just like me? Well, there's now two cameras on the front of the S10 Plus. There's the standard 12 megapixel camera, and that's joined by another eight megapixel lens, which gives depth information. Now that hopefully should result in much better looking depth of field for those nice creative selfies. And of course, it's also the front facing cameras that will let you use Samsung's AR emoji and various stickers. Although whether they've been made any better by the addition of that second lens remains to be seen. Overall, I do have high hopes for photography on Samsung's new flagship phone. That super wide angle lens, I think could open up some nice creative opportunities. But of course it will all come down to actual image quality and we won't know what that's like until we give this phone our full review treatment. In the meantime though, do let us know your thoughts on the cameras on the Galaxy S10 and indeed your thoughts about the phone altogether. Has Samsung done enough to take the challenge back to Apple and Huawei? Make sure to put your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe and of course check out CNET.com for all the latest news on the S10 range.